What's up, softball players? Coach Dan Blute here. And today I want to talk about a really tough topic for a lot of young players to get through, which is politics. So politics and softball are difficult. They're difficult in all sports. But here are my strategies for coping with them. Number one, you should try to have the best, most communicative relationship with your coach as possible. So what that means is being polite to them, being respectful, being coachable, being a person that if you were a coach, you would want to coach. So a lot of times the players that complain, and believe me, I played baseball for a long time. I heard lots and lots of complaining from teammates about politics. Um, usually the people that complain a lot are the people that complain about everything in life that think all these outside factors are always out to get them are always looking at things glass half full or explaining away their own misgivings, their own poor performance by other people. Like he's screwing me over. She's screwing me over. Uh, really when you take an introspective focus, when you're saying, what could I have do better to earn more playing time? That's when you usually have the better outcomes and you feel better mentally. So number one is being communicative. So what I mean by that is you need to talk to your coach. So if you're not getting the playing time that you want, approach him or her in a respectful way and say, hey coach, um, just wanted you to, know, you to know that I really wanna contribute and I was wondering if you'd give me any pointers and any things that I can work on at home to try to get more playing time on the field. I know when I've been a coach, when a player or a parent approaches me in a super respectful way like that, I think in my mind, okay, what can I do to get that person on the field a little bit more? It's just good nature, it's just goodwill when people are asking you, how can I help the team? So if you're that kind of player, be like, sort of extend the olive branch, like turn the other cheek, go talk to your coach, ask them what you can do, and phrase it in the way that, I wanna help the team, I wanna be better for my teammates and help us win, what can I do to, to do that? The other thing is just asking questions about why you're playing in a specific position. So say you've been playing a lot of outfield, but now you're stuck at second base, or say you're used to playing third base, but now someone else is playing third and you're stuck in the outfield or you're stuck on the bench. Those are common questions. Why am I not playing as much as I used to? Or why am I playing somewhere different? Those questions usually have an answer. I always had an answer when I was a coach, but unless someone asked me, I didn't always say, hey, Johnny, or hey, Sally, I'm not playing you at this position here today because I'm playing this person because of this. There's always a reason, and it's always okay to ask as long as it's done in a respectful manner. If you're grumbling in the background, complaining about someone playing over top of you, or your parents are in the stands complaining to other parents and just making a fuss about it, that's not gonna go over well with anyone. For me as a coach, if you're doing that stuff, I'd be like, yeah, stay on the bench. So, but when you come to me and say, hey coach, not why am I not playing here, but what could I do to get back on the field? What could I do to earn more reps at third base? What could I do to get back um, as the starting left fielder? Phrasing questions in a what sort of way or how rather than why, like imagine this, Someone comes up and goes, why did you do that? It feels very accusatory. But if someone said, what was the reason you just did that? It's a lot softer toned and it's a lot less accusatory. So if you're talking to your coach, try to avoid whys, be super respectful and try to phrase it in a way like, I'm trying to get back out there to help my team and I wanna be good for everyone else. So what can I do coach to help do that? or what can I do to maybe earn as much playing time as I had before? Those are all reasonable, respectful questions. And when you ask and you approach a coach that way, that's gonna be helpful. Lastly, if none of this is working and you just feel like, you know what, coach's daughter's playing there and I'm not the coach's daughter, that stuff does happen sometimes. Or coach just loves this person that's been starting for three years, even though they're not performing any well and they're a senior, so I'm gonna sit. Here's the thing, your job as an athlete and as a person in your, just in all walks of life is to control what you can control and to be a good teammate and to be respectful to everyone amongst it all. So you will not be able to control coaches. If they don't wanna play you, they're not going to. Complaining about it, having your parents complain about it, being a cancer in the, in the clubhouse, which if you don't know what that means, that means your negative attitude infects everyone else's. Um, all those things are just gonna make the situation worse, you're gonna feel worse, and it's gonna blow up your situation with that team. So if you absolutely cannot solve your politics issues by talking to your coach, by being communicative, by being a good teammate, then what you need to do 
is you just need to suck it up and you need to be a good teammate about it anyway. And you need to just remind yourself that you can't control that. All that you do control is your attitude, your work ethic, your sportsmanship, your companionship to your teammate. Those are things that you can control. So if you can't control your playing time, which ultimately you cannot, then you just need to have the best glass half full, positive mindset, practice harder, play harder. And there's a saying in pro baseball, which is if you don't like it, play better. And so in all walks of life, especially in athletics, if you're not seeing results on the field or if you're not playing as much as you'd like to play, it's always best to look at yourself and say, if I was hitting 450, I was hitting the cover off the ball or I was dominating, would politics come into play here? Probably not, right? So if you're not the starting left fielder, sure, maybe you're hitting 290 and a girl is hitting 260 is playing over top of you, but guess what? Go hit 360. Go make it a no doubter that you belong on the field and someone else doesn't, okay? That's my best advice. If all else fails, keep your head up, understand what you can control and what you can't, and if you don't like it, play better, all right? Hopefully this video helped you. If you like it, hit the like button. Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear if you've struggled with some politics stuff. I'm happy to discuss it with you. And uh, subscribe to the channel, share with a friend. I'll see you in the next video.